Hello guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. Today what we're going to be taking a look at is the auto replanting sapling thing that we basically had to uh, re uh, basically get going um, on a, its own tutorial because people just wouldn't want to vote for it. Anyhow, uh, what I ended up doing was just basically go ahead and make the tutorial anyways and that should help hopefully um, allow us to move forward with the other tutorials. Now as you can see uh, what's happening here is we're basically replacing the blocks and saplings are being placed from item to block form. Uh, now this can be actually be done with any type of block that has a item and block form. So for example grass blocks or even the grass. Uh, actual grass block for that. You could do sand, you could do logs, leaves, whatever you want and it would still work the exact same way. Now it, it's not going to place exactly where it is, it's going to try finding the nearest place that it, it can actually spawn the sapling at and for that we actually have some code that basically requires it to find a replaceable block so we have a tag for that and we also have a tag for what saplings are for the items and then we also have a tag for the soil type for the sa for the um, the saplings because if you were to place the uh, sapling on something like sand it won't work because it's not a placeable block but you can place it on grass, puzzle, and dirt. So with that being said let's hop into Amcrater and I'll show you the code. So let's take a look at the tags first and I'll cover that and then we can move on to the actual procedure itself. So there is a tag called replaceable and this is what I'm basically putting it under for any blocks that are replaceable. So what I've assigned here is the sugarcane, dead bush, grass, dead bush, which is another type, then there's grass, and then fern, and then I did all the different types of flowers, and I believe there is the double plants as well. So sunflower, lilac, tall grass, large fern, rose bush, uh, that one, and the mushrooms as well. Now this is obviously called replaceable. It's under the forge namespace. You can put it under your mod namespace as well. That would work fine. The only important thing is you, it needs to be under the tag type set to blocks. Now that's important to basically run in the script. Uh, the other thing that we're testing for in our procedure is something called soil. Again, you can call it whatever you want uh, for the tag name, but it needs to be in the same location in the procedure and it can be either for your mod or forge depending on how you want to use it. And the other thing that you want to do is make sure that it's also under the block type for the tag. Now for the saplings what you need to do is actually set the grass block, the dirt block, and puzzle so the saplings can actually be placed on top of these. And if it's not one of these basic blocks then it won't actually spawn the the actual um, sapling itself so it'll just despawn and without actually placing the block and lastly we have saplings now this one is um, you can name it whatever you want it can be any type of particular thing uh, it's under the forge namespace you can put it under your mod as well that would work fine and the difference is it's going to be the tag type is under items so it needs to be under items not blocks and then we basically specified all the different types of saplings so once you have all that set up uh, what you can do is create a global procedure so it's set up when gem expires now you can find that a little bit further down where the two gem types of things are basically located so when gem expires and then what we're going to be doing is building this from scratch. You will need three or four types of local variables, uh, three number ones and one logic one. So I've basically set the local variables for 
the numbers as block pause y, block pause z, and block block pause x. So those will be handling our location of where we're going to be spawning the block itself. The other thing that we're basically doing is we're creating a local um, variable for the for a logic tag and that will basically allow us to bypass most of the script for our repeaters so we can basically just move on and spawn the actual convert the block into or the item into an actual block without needing to change the coordinates and everything like that that's quite important to basically cancel everything else so I'll explain how that all works in just a second so to find the this particular part right here what we need to do is we need to we'll create a little script I guess off to the side here and we'll we'll need a if statement to start with and we're going to place that down right here and then what we're going to do is go to items and then there should be one called is provided item stack tagged in item tags as and then you should have your type here we're going to drag that down here and then what we're going to do is we're going to grab a light blue operator we're going to drag that and place that here and then we're going to set this to our saplings uh, tag in our case I've used the forge namespace so we need to go forge and then colon and then saplings so our tag name now if you're we're, if it's under a mod uh, namespace what you need to do is replace forge with your mod ID so like that uh, obviously your mod ID is going to be different than mod ID as this example so you need to make sure that you have the right mod ID uh, because we're using forge we just need to set it as forge and it should be all lowercase and the same as the exact uh, way your tag is actually basically set up the other thing that we need to do is actually set this to true so we're going to go to logic grab a true operator operation and then we're going to place that rate there next what we need to do is we need to set our location to negative x minus one and then we need to do y minus one and z minus one so we're going to actually place down x and then we're going to go to math and then we're going to grab the operator and then we're going to grab set this to minus go back to math set this to one so we need a number variable or number block and then what we need to do is grab go under minecraft components grab our three different types of coordinate based things which is your x y and z coordinate based things right so after you've done that just duplicate this a couple times and then you want to set this to x y and z and make sure to update your variables to match those so y and z after you've done that what you need to do is go to flow control grab your repeater and you're going to want to go back to math grab a number set this to a value of three and then you want to duplicate that two times so it's like this after which you want to set up the coordinate part of the script so the first thing that we need to do is actually increase the inner part which is going to be our x coordinate and we're going to do that by going to variable and then we're going to grab to grab our local variable we're going to set this to x and then what we're going to do is we're going to go and grab a math operator and we're going to set this x plus and then we want to go back to variables grab a get local variable and then we're going to set this to x as well and then we're going to grab a number and we're going to increase it, increase this by one so every time this particular repeater runs it's going to increase the uh, value of x to one so now that basically we've repeated this uh, i believe three nine times uh, this will this value will increase by nine so or one each time of that so it will be a total of nine so we actually need to reset this after this this um, 
particular procedure is run. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just duplicate this. We're going to actually place this down here. We're going to set this to Z for our Z coordinate. But we also need to copy our coordinate reset part right here where we specify the coordinates. And we're going to put that right on the other uh, repeater right here. And what this will do is every time this is run, it will increase the number by one and it will reset X. So then this will start off at three again, or pardon me, zero again. So it'll go one, two, three, and then this will go one, uh, or pardon me, this will go one, and then this will go one, two, three, and then this will reset, and then it will go two, and then it will go one, two, three, and then this will go three, and then this will reset, and then it'll go one, two, three. So we need to do this for our Y coordinate as well. And we're just gonna duplicate our X, or pardon me, our Z, and we're gonna set this to Y. So we're gonna increase Y by one, and then we need to actually reset both X and Z coordinates. So we're just gonna duplicate the top parts up there. And that's your basic uh, testing for your area script. So basically it's just testing for a cube of where um, a certain thing is run. So uh, it doesn't actually do anything at the moment because we haven't tested for anything, but right now it's going to run in a cubic area. So the next thing that we need to do is actually go to flow control, grab a if statement, and we're gonna go to logic, grab a operator, and then we're going to set this to and, and then we're going to drop it like that. And then what we need to do is we're going to test for a block MBT variable. So we're going to go to block and then scroll down until it says is, and then there's a yellow operator tagged in block as, tagged in block as, or tag block tags as, and then the the default uh, string is logs. So we're going to place that right here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to remove that block and then we're going to get the block. So we're going to go to block procedures again, scroll down until we see get block at, and we're going to replace the X, Y, and Z with our uh, location for X and Y and Z. So for our variables like so. And what this will do is it will test for the block location relative to um, this particular where the uh, script is running. So this is testing for the area. Obviously it will test for a three by three by three area. And what this is doing is every time this inner part is run, it's going to be testing at that exact location where it's running the, the condition at. So now what we need to do is we actually need to set our replaceable blocks for our condition. So forge replaceable. And the other thing that we need to do is actually test for the block below if it is a soil block that we basically specified. So this needs to be forge soil. And what we're gonna do is actually just duplicate our Y position, delete Y, and then we're going to place our variable for this one in. And then for soil, forge soil, it should be the variable minus one and that will test for the block below. After which we want to set our local variable for our logic. And we're gonna set this to true. And what this will do is allow us to break out of the loop. So what we're going to do now is actually create another if statement. We're gonna place that below that and what we're going to do is we're going to go and grab a logic operator and then we're going to go to custom variables and then we're going to get our local variable and then we're going to go to logic again get true so if this is true then what we want to do is go to flow control and there is a block down here that says break out of loop and you want to place that right down in the particular procedure so it, only if this variable is true it will break out of the loop now, the only way for this to actually be true is if the conditions are met. So we're going to actually do this for every repeater right before the variables change. So this will basically cancel out any of the repeaters when this variable turns true. 
without changing the coordinate location. Now after that, what we want to do is actually run our script for basically placing the blocks. We're actually going to uh, just duplicate this procedure right here where it says uh, local spawn sapling equal true. And we're going to delete the breakout of loop part. And then what we're going to want to do is we want to place the block. And what we want to do is delete this part right here. We want to delete the X, Y, and Z. And we're going to set the X, Y, and Z to our local uh, variables. So X, Y, and Z, like so. And then what we're going to do is go to block. And then we're going to scroll down until you see a part that says convert. And then there's an item. A particular block to and then there's a little icon right here it's hard to see but it basically says convert item into block or error if conversion fails so what this will do is it's going to basically convert the particular item that we've basically specified so we know the provided item is going to be our forge tag so we can use this provided item very or block right here under Minecraft components and then provided item to basically generate the sapling. So what provided item will end up do, doing is it's going to just get the item that is at the time despawning and it's going to try converting it into a solid form. Now again you can change this to any type of block you want as long as it has a item form as well as a physical block form and the conditions around it are met. So outside of that, that's all there is to creating a block that can basically spawn as a block form when it despawns. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask the community and I'm sure someone will be able to make sense of it. Uh, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, peace out.